Hey everyone, welcome back to what was once called the BNSF Plains Division. And if you've been with me for a little bit, you will recognize this scene right here as Crawford, Nebraska on the upper shelf to the right. So in episode one of this construction series, we're going to look at how I've decided to transform this layout into a more cohesive version of Marias Pass. So on the old layout, I'm calling it the old layout, it's still fundamentally the same benchwork and room and all that, but on the old layout titled the Plains Division, we had uh, the western end of the Highline subdivision on the lower level. You can see Whitefish Yard pictured here down below. Um, and most of the name places and locations on the lower level will remain unchanged, but the big change scenically and in terms of operations is moving away from modeling Crawford Hill on the upper level, which was located in Nebraska, and transforming that into the climb along Marias Pass between Essex and the top of the grade at Marias Summit. So we will look at how we take this scene right here at Crawford, Nebraska, and transform it into Essex, Montana. We will also look at transitioning the pretty messy staging room into a more complete and well-lit dispatcher's room. One of the cooler scenes on the layout is at Belton, so we'll look at taking this pink foam and turning it into this scene. And what were once big sandstone cuts along Crawford Hill will transform into the shed district near Blacktail along Marias Pass. And in this first episode, we will start to tear down some of the scenery here in Nebraska to make way for the new Montana scenery. So back in January of 2022, I started on the journey to transform this layout into the Marias Pass HO scale layout. And the first thing I did was pull off the printed paper backdrop that lined the walls near Crawford, Nebraska here. I also plucked out uh, many of the trees, actually all of the trees, and this led way for me to start on track destruction. So here at Crawford, we are removing a lot of the original track layout. The crossover will remain the same, um, but we are gonna change some of the uh, sightings and spurs here to make it more appropriate for Essex, Montana. And the exact details of those track changes will be outlined in episode two of this con construction series. But today we're going to primarily focus on really just destroying some pretty nice scenery and decent track work. Up here at the very top of the grade, which at one point was Belmont, Nebraska, will soon become the summit of Marias Pass. And you'll see here in this big gap in the backdrop, there was a tunnel here where the tracks would have disappeared. But I came to kind of dislike the open nature of the backdrop here. Um, and I decided that I wanted to close this off entirely to separate the two aisles that run the length of the room. I just thought that would create 
a bit more of an isolated feel that I think is a bit more appropriate for the mountain style railroading uh, that you can experience out in the western reaches of Montana. The staging room was probably one of the bigger transformations that's happened on the layout. Um, it looked pretty bad, a lot of exposed duct work and, and insulation, things like that. So one of the things I wanted to do was install some better lighting. So I started with some Barina T5 integrated LED fixtures that are pretty modular. You can just sort of plug them together or connect them with uh, cables. So these light both the upper level and lower level now which um, is good for seeing trains, but also the dispatcher actually sits back in this room now. So this lighting is good for copying paperwork and all of that. Um, and then all of the hardboard work that you see um, is, well, just that, like the, the framing, the walls, if you will, that create the somewhat finished appearance is really just one eighth of an inch hardboard. And it's the same material that I use for my fascia all around the layout. So pretty simple. Um, it's very much just a facade. There's not a lot of structure here, but it looks a lot better than it once did. You'll see that one of the steps I had to take while I was reworking the scenery here at Crawford is removing the fascia because the new scene of Essex, Montana doesn't have any sort of topography or elevation at the front edge of the layout, and it's just a, a flat edge all the way down the scene. Well, here's the quick update. Uh, you'll see that underneath, well, two things. One, over Whitefish Yard, I have bumped down the face just a bit. The reason for that being um, the, the lights underneath, and I have them turned off right now so you can kind of see them. The LED light strip beforehand was like almost flush with the bottom edge. And the issue is that A, it didn't look good even from eye level when you're standing up because you like the, the strip isn't, 100% flat. It's just tacked up there with the self-adhesive. Um, so there's a couple places where it has to go over the, uh, you know, the, the supports, those, those shelf brackets there where it overlaps and it just kind of dips down and the light, you know, it's it, sort of a floodlight pattern and you can see it spray all over the room and it catches you in the eye kind of in a weird way. And the other thing is if you're sitting down at that end of the yard, which is what I intend for operators to do, um, the yard operator, it's nice to be able to sit on a on a chair, but if you're sitting on the chair down there, you're just peripherally staring into the lights for hours on end. And it honestly, it gives you a headache. There's something about those LED lights that um, are just really intense and not fun to look at. So I dropped the fascia enough that when you're standing up, there's no chance of seeing it. It's a nice, clean light seal underneath. And if you're operating that end of the yard, you will not be blinded. Now, the other thing I did uh, along here to clean it up is I got rid of the legs as you can see. Um, so what I've done is much like the upper level where I have my shelf brackets which are kind of hidden by the the backdrop now. Underneath here I've done the same thing. Um, different style of shelf brackets. These will bear a bit more weight. Uh, I can't remember what they're rated for but um, these two look weirdly spaced. There is a reason for that. Uh, and then there are more evenly spaced ones going down that way. And for operations, I'll get rid of these bins. Those are my construction bins, if you will. It has all my building materials. There's kits in there, like glue and paint and stuff in that one. Um, but even, even with a bit of storage under there, you can see it looks much cleaner. Definitely widens up the, uh, the aisleway and just a, a better presentation overall. Worth mentioning too, before we move on, is this little area down here. Um, so I, really subtle and you wouldn't be able to tell, but this backdrop piece here, um, as you can see by the fact that there's a gap, actually used to sit a bit lower. 
uh, but I decided since this piece is not visible from the other side, it doesn't matter where the bottom edge is um, on that side of the scene because it's now covered. And this little gap here doesn't matter because there will be rocks and scenery covering that. Um, so what I did is I just lifted this up so that it would be flush with the bottom edge of, there's actually a, an open grid frame here. You can see that's what this bottom edge is. So I brought this up to that height so that now I've got a nice tight seal. And then I put basically a piece of fascia up there, which is effectively doing what this is doing here, except I'm gonna paint this sky color. So we've got a nice, a cool little frame right here that if you're standing at eye level, that scene with the tunnel is just gonna disappear into that corner. And then you'll see your train next going through here on this middle level. On the opposite side of the backdrop, I had to cut a pretty tricky piece of hardboard that serves as the divider between the scene at Columbia Falls and the staging room and serves as the portal for the reverse loop on the lower level. So one of the last fixes I need to make before we start working on the backdrop is actually finishing the physical backdrop. And one of those pieces is right here. There was just a gap. Um, originally, this wasn't going to be a river scene, but we dropped the... Uh, dropped the scenery base and the backdrop isn't low enough. So all I've done is I've just spliced a two by four uh, between our two hardboard panels on either side of the peninsula. And then this piece right here is gonna slide in and we will secure that in place. And then we'll do our joint compound and then we'll be ready to paint. So here's the update on the drop bridge fascia, nothing beautiful right now. Um, honestly, a pretty simple, uh, solution here. I just, you know, put some hardboard on the face and then I'm using these quarter rounds as guides. Uh, these are the contacts that were already in place a long time ago. And then this piece overhangs a bit. So you'll see that basically what I did, if I bring this up, you'll see uh, that that, the actual drop bridge hardboard is cut at an angle. If I bring this all the way up, it just slots in nicely. You'll see there's actually a bit of a gap there, but the reason is because of this latch mechanism, uh, in order to get that latch to go over the turn key, you have to push this, oh, I'm not doing it right now, but you can see you actually have to push this up a little bit further um, than flush. So I kind of overestimated the gap, but at the end of the day, when it's all painted, I think it'll look fine. So uh, I think it looks much cleaner and it's honestly not the least elegant solution and it's very mechanically sound. So uh, very pleased with how this turned out and now we're all done with hardboard on the layout which is fantastic with all the hardboard finishing touches cut and installed it was time to putty all the holes and gaps and uh, get on to painting all these new surfaces So I was actually able to leave in place a lot of the original scenery substructure because I just went right over the top of it. But here where the upper level reverse loop enters the staging room, I did have to tear down a lot of the original landform. Well, that was pretty much all of the deconstruction I had to do on the layout. So in episode two of this construction series, we will focus forward and take a look at the track plan changes and adjustments that I had to make over the last year and a half. Well, that's it for this video, but if you want to see more content just like it, I politely ask you to like, subscribe, and turn on the notifications so that you don't miss my next video. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.